number one to heal, it's still working today. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. He is still touching sick bodies today with his healing power every day. We might say, through this COVID, that people are going home, but you know when they come to a time, God will take his people home. At the age of 80, some of us might be going home. At the age of 90, some might be going home. At the age of 100, some might be going home. But let us fulfill, let us do God's will to fulfill our lifespan that God has called us to live, not in sickness, not in disease, and not in fear, but trusting in Almighty God. I was listening to a song yesterday while it's going over my work yesterday. And that songwriter said, they were praying for a little boy, you know, the month of December. I thank God because I came home from surgery on November 7th or 9th. And at the same time, I did realize that this academic was going through the land. And when I got home and all of this break out in February, I said, my husband, we are glad that we came home. Or we might have been stuck up in, in Miami someplace and not able to come home. But we give God, I give God praise because there was people who was trying to come home. My sister was, was very heavy the other day, was trying to come home. I know she was sick before, but she couldn't come home. God, everything break out. My children fought because I couldn't come up to from Miami to St. Thomas. But I am glad I was home. Because this, this COVID-19, or this devil-19, have been hampering so much people. It has been destroying the hearts of life. And I want to admonish you all this morning. Most people then die from the COVID-19. The devil is a lion. He is a great lion. Some people have been sick, yes. And this COVID thing is something you can't see. But just that like you get the flu and people still die from the flu, they get flu shot and they still die. Now they want to create an injection to give you for COVID-19 and say if you don't take it, they're going to pick you up from your home. My daughter was saying to me the other day, and put you in a bus and take you away. You're going to take somebody out of their home and take it the review. What the president don't take this injection? What all the six people don't take this injection? We are not guinea pigs. The body of God, people must stand up and stand up for truth because our God is still alive. Our God is still alive. We need to stand up and we need to pray harder. We need to pray and believe that changes is going to take place. I say COVID-19 must die in the name of Jesus. It must die. It cannot be going through the land all the time. It's a season for everything. And our God that you own this whole world, this universe, is looking. He allowed things to happen. But he says time for COVID-19 to stop. It is time to break the fear for my children. It is time to heal my children. It is time. It is time. We need to stand up and be content. And we need to stand a word for those who do not know him. And pray that God will save them. Salvation. <laughs> I said to myself, I hope I didn't miss what Pastor was saying. Fair. When the Pastor come and said it, fair salvation and healing. But salvation. Aren't you glad you got salvation today? Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad? Some of you look like you ain't glad. But Jesus, Jesus is the same today and forever. He was the same back then. Over 2,000, over 400,000 years ago, whatever years ago, he is the creator of all kind. 
when I read stories that they got trees living over 4,000 years and 5,000 years, what a great God we serve. A great, great, mighty God. Salvation. Your assurance of salvation is from in John, 1 John 5, 11. I'm going to give you some scriptures. 1 John 5, 11 to 13. John 1, 12. John 10, 28 to 29. But salvation is a dependency on God alone for provision and assurance and security. Salvation is deliverance. <clears throat> Sorry. The world religion teach that we need to be delivered, but each has a different understanding of what we truly need. The most important thing about the plan of salvation is that it is God's plan and not human plan. God's plan of salvation and why? You see, in God's plan of salvation, first we must understand why we need to be saved. Simply because we be, sorry, we have sin, so we need to be saved. The Bible declares that everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. He himself is appropriation for our sin. And that's in 1 John 2, 2. And not for us alone. God didn't die for just the couple of other but the three of us in here who might be outside in the yard. He died for the world. Jesus gave his life for the world. None of us in here want to give our children up for anyone. I'm telling you, I have four. I'm not going to give them up for you. No one of you going to give your children up for anyone. But Jesus gave his life for mankind. Jesus died that we may live. Amen. Hallelujah. A man asked the Apostle Paul how to be saved. Acts 16 and 21, you can find that. And Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And you see, that is the, the only way to follow God's plan of salvation. It is to believe. That is the only requirement. John 3, 16 said, everyone in hell to know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God has provided for our salvation through Jesus Christ. All we must do is receive it by faith, fully trusting in Jesus alone as Savior. Hallelujah. Salvation is deliverance from danger of suffering. In the Christian doctrine, of salvation we must we are saved from wrath that is from God's judgment of sin our sin has separated us from God and consequences of sin is death only God can save us God rescue us through Jesus Christ read John 3 17 it was Jesus death on the cross and resurrection that have achieved our salvation. When we hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, then we must believe and fully trust the Lord Jesus. This involves repentance, a change of mind about sin and Christ. Ask God to forgive all your sin Small sin, big sin, all the sin, non indifferent. I don't care what little sin it is. If you steal, it's still sin. If you commit adultery, it's still sin. If you kill your neighbor, it is sin. If you kill your brother, your sister, it is sin. 
Some that care for land. Some that care for foolishness. Some that care you for the jewelries on your neck. It is a sin. And the only way you can be pardoned is through the blood of Jesus Christ. This salvation comes only by accepting Jesus Christ. Well, if we are ready to follow God's plan today for salvation, place your faith in Jesus as your Savior. Change your mind from embracing sin and rejecting God to embracing God through Jesus Christ. If you do this, God's word promises that you will be saved from sin. You will be forgiven. And you will spend eternity in heaven. There is no more or nothing more important or no other decision than this. So place your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior today. God bless you. As you have done this, and you have a new life today, and God's word will change you. Trust in God. Look to God. Read his word. He will take away your fears. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He is the great God of the fair, of the healing, and of salvation. Everything is based on Jesus Christ. He is the deliverer of fair, he is the deliverer of healing, and he is the deliverer of salvation. May God bless you today and thank you for listening. Amen. Amen. Father, I bless you and I thank you this morning for the word of God. I ask that you will bless your people, those near and far, those who need to be healed. Oh God, I just want to thank you for healing them. I thank you for removing fear from the hearts of men today, Lord God. And I thank you for God who will come to you and give their life to you, saving them so they will have eternal life. May God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Put our hands together. Those in the house, we thank you. Hallelujah. Let's your microphone is turned off. What are you doing today? Hallelujah. So, my God is awesome. Oh, I can't hear you. So, my God is awesome. Amen. So, good to see those who made it in the house. Hallelujah. We had some technical issues, but thank God you made it. And we'll fix it and say that. Apparently, the, oh, the internet system is down. I saw Innovative working on the line, but we tried taping it and we're going to upload it later. If that's the issue. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah for the word that we receive. Amen. And fear, healing, and salvation, we pray. And as, a, as many would hear the word of God, they would put their trust, their faith, and confidence in God. Amen? Anybody in the house say? Amen. Amen. So at this time, what we're going to do, we're going to take our communion. Every Sunday uh, during this COVID pandemic, we are taking it, coming ourselves. If you're at home, listen to it on demand. You get some water, get some juice, get a piece of bread, get a piece of cracker, get something. And we're going to take it together. We're not religious about it. But we know God's going to heal us and restore us. Amen? And now, Father, we thank you. We lift the bread. The, the bread reminds us of your covenant with your broken body, with your church, and with your covenant people. And so, Father, right now, our world is broken. And we're in need of help. And only you we can go to with all systems, medical systems, our failing us, those in high places, don't know what to do, what to say. But, Father, you never fail us. And so, Father, our trust, our springs are in you. And so, Father, we come to you as a global family and as a local global life church. We take it, we desert it, because this world is broken with fear, with pandemic. Lord, those in your covenant, we are not broken, we are not filled with fear. We are covered by your broken body. Bless us, we pray, as we take it together as one family, and everybody say, Amen. Let's take it together. Father, we thank you. We drink of your precious light blood. We drink of the grape juice. Your Father, your word declares as often as we drink it. 
We declare the Lord's death, his triumph over death, over hell. And so, Father, right now he's seated in heavenly places. We too are seated in heavenly places. We are covered and well protected. Now, Father, as we get in covenant with you one more time, we want to say that we are staying in covenant with you as we drink of your precious light blood. Now, Father, is there any problem in our bodies, cyst, any one of our organs that are operating and functioning correctly? Father, your word declares that you're the Lord who heals us. Lord God, your word, your, your word declares that you will bring to every one of us health and healing. Your word declares that by your stripes, Lord God, we are the healed and we are the whole. You are the one who set up this covenant table. So, Father, we come in obedience and humility around this covenant table, asking for our restoration, our healing, and our cleansing, our redemption. We are asking, Father, that we want to stay in covenant with you in times like these when the world is at a crossroads. Father, we decree and we declare. And we can, we can all say together, Father, we decree and we declare that we are in constant covenant with you. And so, Father, we draw now on your covenant blood and your covenant word in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Let's drink it together as one family. Hallelujah. Amen. And we can all shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. So we'll get it without plastic. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. Let's do it one more time. We, we could worship you. God. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. Hallelujah. We thank you for the great work you've done in our lives. So we thank uh, Minister uh, Sonia Malone for taking on the challenge. Hallelujah. Last week we had Minister, I mean, we had Elder um, Williams. Uh, next week, uh, who knows? We'll have someone else. And so, so we want to hear what God has placed within our hearts. Amen. During this time of pandemic, I hope we, we can help one another out. Amen. 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 So we thank God. Hallelujah. We have uh, glory be to God. So we thank you for that word. And if you would like to write to us, write to us at Global Life Church, PO Box 304283, St. Thomas, United States, Virgin Islands, zip code 00, uh, 00803. That's Global Life Church, PO Box 304283. St. Thomas 00803. You could visit us um, online at www.globallightchurchusvi.org um, and you can go over there and you can give a donation just to bless us as we bring you the word of God uh, during these times. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we bless, bless God and we let's put our hands together as we sign out here. Amen. Amen. Thank you.